This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Ines Leia, and today we're going to see how to create a slow motion hyperlapse. Wait, what did you say? How can slow motion and hyperlapse be used in the same sentence? Well, yes, we will see how to create exactly this. It was actually inspired by a music video from Ariana Grande, Breeden. That was an amazing music video where she was walking in a regular speed and everything passed by like a hyperlapse behind her. In their example, they probably ended up using a robotic arm, so there was movement in the shot. We don't have that kind of budget, so we will have to find another creative way. By the way, if you enjoy watching my videos, give it a like and also be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. That would be an amazing support. But yeah, let's get started. The first thing you'll need is a camera and a tripod. Next, it would be great if you have a portable green screen just like this one. This green screen is actually from Photo. I'll put a link in the description below. I'm really in love with that green screen. I use it a ton of times and if you don't have a green screen you can still go and do rotoscoping but I really really hate that process. Anyway it's still possible and if you don't know what rotoscoping is well google it. And actually if you want to learn more about rotoscoping you can check out today's video sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology and more. And they also have a very big section on visual effects and filmmaking, so definitely worth checking out. They have premium memberships that give you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields, so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities and do the work you love. I actually really enjoyed the VFX Rotoscoping 101 with After Effects and Mocha, which is basically the best way on doing rotoscoping. Skillshare is also more affordable than most learning platforms out there. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And it's always a good idea to check out what other people are creating in their field to get inspired by. So even if you already know quite a lot, I also enjoy watching these classes just to stay up to date. And Skillshare was awesome enough to set you up with a two months free trial. Link is in the description below. So for this example, I went to Ghent, a beautiful city here in Belgium. It would be advised to bring a friend so he can hold the green screen behind you. It's otherwise going to be very difficult, so I called Love Vito. And he was up for it. So if you don't know Love Vito, we actually work closely together. The boss working. He actually produces some amazing beats which you can use in your YouTube videos. Check out his amazing channel. It's it's really, really cool what he produces. I use his music a ton of time, even in the example you just saw. So I'm in Ghent, I set up my tripod with my camera and took a time lapse. To do this I used my Panasonic GH5S. This camera has a built-in time lapse feature, which is absolutely awesome. So every 3 seconds I took one picture with a shutter speed of 1 second. This is really low and I, so I had to use a variable ND filter to cut off the excess of light. That way you get those beautiful and blurry movements in your shot which is going to give you some more realistic and smoother results. If you don't have the time lapse option or you have only a film camera you can also film for a while and set the shutter speed very low. It will result in a similar effect. So I stood there for 7 minutes to take enough photos for a few seconds of video because we're going to work in a 24 fps timeline, which means that for every 1 second of the video I need 24 photos. And each photo is taken every 3 seconds, so you do the math, I'm not a big fan of it. So once you have done your time lapse, it is advised to use your green screen in the exact same location and that time of the day. The reason I didn't record this afterwards in a studio or something was because recreating light from outside from the location on a green screen often turns out in a very digital recreation of the effect. Having the luxury of working with a green screen on the exact same location is really beneficial for the end result. So I asked Levito to stand behind me with the green screen and follow me slightly with the green screen. As I'm coming closer to the camera I didn't want to get out of the frame and that did happen if he just stayed in that position. Do make sure you have enough space between you and the green screen so you don't cast any shadows on it. 
I was actually very lucky with the weather. It was a cloudy day, which means soft light and no shadows. If you would record this on a sunny day, make sure you don't cast any shadows on your green screen. So as you can see, my green was pretty solid, so try to do the same for your shots. So now we are back in the office. To combine these two videos, it's actually really not that much work. If you want to work with the exact same footage as me, just click with the link in the description below and you will be able to download those two clips so you can follow along and test it beforehand. I shot all my photos in RAW, these contain a lot more information, so then I edited them very slightly and subtle in Adobe Lightroom and then I exported them as a JPEG. Next I will import these photos in Premiere Pro. To do this, select your first image and then toggle the image sequence below and then import your images. Now you will have a video clip of all your photos together if they follow up in name. Now I want to right click on my image sequence and go to modify, interpret footage and click on assume this frame rate. Set it to 24 FPS. Next I will import my green screen clip. I will actually also import my time lapse as a rendered out video clip which I prepared for you guys so it's a little bit more logical for you guys to follow along with the tutorial. Now drag your time lapse into a new sequence by dragging it to a create sequence icon. Then I bring my slow motion green screen clip on top of it and now we want to mask out around me a little bit, very roughly. So we go into the motion effects and go to the opacity and click on the mask tool to mask myself out. Once you have done that, click on the mask path stopwatch to create a keyframe. Now scrub through the time and adjust the mask where needed in order to have only green and myself completely in the shot. Next I will go to effect keying and apply the ultra key effect. Here we want to select the green color and voila, we have a key. We just need to clean it up a little bit, so what I will do is change my view to a matte view. This will change it to a black and white image, so we can see the mistakes a little bit better. Open the matte generation and drop the shadow down until you don't see any green screen spill anymore. And there we have our effect. Now if you want to take it a step further and also introduce some people in the foreground to create some depth in your shot and make it look a little bit more advanced, what you can do is select the background layer and alt drag it on top. So now you have a duplicated version of your background on top of your clips. Here we want to find a time frame where we see a person standing still, very sharp. Like here we have the red woman. I'm going to right click on my clip and add a frame hold with source timecode. Now we have a frozen frame. Next, mask out the woman very roughly, like this. We don't need to put too much effort into this. And then we're going to nest this clip. Then we're going to apply a blur effect, directional blur and set the angle to 90. Then adjust the length of the blur to your preference. And now of course you can scale up this layer and also put it into position. What I also like to do is cut the beginning and end part off a little bit and make this shot a 2 to 3 frames long. Then animate the position so it looks like over the small period she actually passes the camera. And what you can do now is I'll drag this little clip to a few more locations on your timeline so it happens a little bit more often. Repeat this process if you want some different people, different colors passing by in front of your camera. You can also use some hue saturation changing for the red color so it becomes a different color and then you can nest everything together. Now I want to animate the scale and position in a little bit, so I'll click on both stopwatches. Here I like to move the keyframes till the end of the clip. Then at the beginning of the clip I will zoom in a little bit and reframe myself so we have this little nice animation. Next I will nest everything once again. Now I want to apply a camera shake effect to make it look a little bit more advanced. On a tripod everything seems easy and amateuristic, so we will use a preset that you can also find on our website called Camera Shake for Premiere Pro. Here I will take one of the presets and drag it on the nested sequence. And now we have a little bit more movement and chaos in our shot, which makes the entire thing look super dope and more advanced. Of course you can always apply a transform effect on top of that to reposition yourself in the composition so it looks a little bit better at the end, your head doesn't get cut off or stuff like that. And here we have our final result. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more and definitely hit the notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. Also, check out our website. We have a bunch of cool stuff to offer for any kind of digital creative and if you buy something from our website, it helps to support this channel. Alright, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.